Welcome to deep water. We're still social distancing, but I wanted to let you know that we are making some plans to open up. Things will look a little differently uh, than they did before everything, but uh, we're just trying to figure out what that's gonna look like, who's gonna feel comfortable coming back. So we did send out a survey. I don't know if you saw it. It came, went out on the email. It's posted on the website. It was in the Facebook group. Uh, that link will still be out there. If you could take a moment, fill it out, and we're trying to gauge where people are, what they feel comfortable with, what they want to know as we as we move forward with opening up at some point to some capacity, uh, possibly in June. So go ahead, grab that link if you don't mind, and fill fill things out. Let us know, or you can shoot us a message, contact us. I'll send you a link and let you know. And today, uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, so we do want to we want to celebrate that day. It, it's a day where we honor those who died to give us freedom and uh, including the freedom in America to then proclaim that Christ died for all. And so we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the country that we live in. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the, the freedoms that we have in Christ. And we thank you for those who gave their, their, their lives so that we can have the freedom to proclaim uh, you in this land. God, help us to use that wisely. Uh, and again, we honor those who've fallen so that we can have the freedoms we have. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, deep water. Welcome. Happy Memorial Day. this morning and start out with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. Thank you for keeping us safe, for meeting our needs, taking care of us. This morning we just want to worship you, lift your name, give you honor and glory. Pray, Lord, that each person listening to this and watching to this, watching this this morning will be blessed. They'll feel your presence. That you'll touch them in a deep and personal way. And even from this remote place, Lord God, that we'll leave your presence changed.
We are in week three now of Life Under the Sun, a series on the book of Ecclesiastes, talking about the one life and really how, how to live it best. And a uh, trivia question we're going to start off with this week. Which U.S. hit song has the oldest lyrics? I'll give you a minute to Google that secretly to look smart with the people that maybe you're quarantined with watching this. Uh, but it's Turn, 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 a number one hit in 1965. But here's the, the lyrics for the song were written uh, about 935 BC. So <laughs> a little bit ago. And so you, maybe you know the song, there is a season turn. Anyway, uh, it was by the birds, but really it, it, it's mostly just a quote of the book of Ecclesiastes in the chapter that we are today. It's one of those chapters that I think I understood the book theologically when I was in my 20s. But now that I'm, you know, slightly older than that, uh, I understand it a little bit more. And so hopefully uh, you'll have that experience too and understand a little more this week. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 
starting in verse 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest. And, you know, there is. There's, if you've lived life long enough, you realize that there is a time to be born, a time to die. The death rate hovers at about 100%. Uh, people can master many things, but, but time will still march on. You, you're born and you die. You know, you have some control over, you know, conception, uh, you know, and, and we can we can work out, we can eat right, we use medicine, we can do all these things to live longer, but ultimately we will pass away. And, you know, we, there's there's planting and there's harvest, there's, there's some control over when you sow the seed and when you put it out there, and, you know, we have lots of farms in this area, and, and they do lots of things to kind of... Uh, to help that process along, but ultimately the weather does what it wants and the harvest is what it is. And it says back in verse three, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. And I've been thinking that about that a lot because I've been working on some projects at home. And, and whenever you do a home project, you, you think about, I think about anyway, the, the, the amount of time that somebody spent working on that at one point. And when we first moved into our house, it's, a, it's an older house and, uh, the kitchen was kind of cut off by this thing that someone had built in and it was a giant It, it, it took us a while to figure it out because even though I'd been in the house a lot as a, when I was a little kid I'd, I'd never really seen the don't recall seeing the thing down But it was this giant thing that came all the way when it came out out of the attic and it It kind of divided the room and it was a giant cowboy scene with built-in speakers and lights and everything And it was horribly tacky and people were like you should keep that I'm like yeah it's because you don't live here <laughs> and it made it impossible to see out the kitchen and everything but uh, but I remember tearing it apart and I was thinking man at some point this was the height of cool and awesomeness and somebody somebody did this because there was a there was a time to build but you know there's a time to tear down too uh, and so you know you're, and you're younger it's funny because some of you just a little advice is you know it, it's okay to decorate there's trends and home stuff that's great uh, but you may just a tip is you, you may find yourself destroying the same things uh, you went into credit card debt to do now so so just think there there there, there is a time to tear down and a time to build up uh, it's verse four says a time to cry and a time to laugh a time to grieve and a time to dance and you know I often read this 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 passage of scripture at funerals as a lot of people do and we find it comforting when we're in the time to grieve and we find comfort knowing that there there was and there will be again a time to laugh and to dance uh, verse five says a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones a time to embrace a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be quiet, and a time to speak. And someone, some of us need to, to, to listen to that one because, you know, it's good to communicate, and some of us need to, to do that more and do that better. And some of us, it's also good to listen, so some of us need to stop speaking and to listen. And uh, I'm, I'm not pointing at you, but it was, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Verse 8 says, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And sometimes life really feels out of control. There's periods where you feel like you have it nailed, you have things down, and other times things are just happening. And not always things we like. Sometimes things we like, sometimes not. So that people die. Spouses walk out, jobs are lost. Uh, and in those times, we understand these verses to be true, that there is this cycle of things. Things happen. You, you can't stop them. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Life goes on. And, and some of these things are things we desire, uh, but we can't treat the list like a buffet. Now, we may not even have buffets after the quarantine, but, but to those of you who know, I, I, I like the buffet, especially you get Indian food buffet. You get, you get a little this, a little that. You know, I'll take some of this, I'll take some of that. No, I don't like that one. But, you know, we, we, in life, we kind of want the good things, but we don't want the bad things. We can't be like, I'll take some harvest, laughter, and peace, please. Uh, you know, hold the death and grief. Uh, but, but life is filled with all those things. A great philosopher once said, some days you're the windshield, some days you're the bug. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> there's times when things are good and there's times when, when, when things hit you and you're dead. But uh, there, are t there are days when, you know, you can't stop smiling. And you, or th then there's also some days where maybe you, you can't stop crying. There's, there's days when, you know, we're building houses. Uh, there's days when we tear them down. There, there's days when we love life. And for many of us, there's days then where, where, where we hate life. There's, there's days where, where life feels like vacation. And you're like, this is awesome. I get to live this life. And then there's days that, that really feel more like work. 
Now, if I ask you right now, would you like to eat a pile of flour baking? Uh, would you go for it? How about a flour of power uh, of flour and baking powder? Still, you're gonna, probably going to say no. How about if I throw a couple of eggs and some sugar in there? You're, you're, you're not probably going to be interested, but as some of you probably realize, these are the ingredients to a cake. And so if we put all these things together, you may not want to eat it, but if we stir it together and bake it for the right amount of time, it, it becomes something that's good. And, and not all ingredients in our lives are good. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad things, but together it, it can become something beautiful. And, and life has hard times as well as easy times. You know, verse 9 says, what do people really get for all their hard work? And again, he, there's this running theme of, man, what, what's this about? <laughs> it says, I have seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful in its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are the gifts from God. And I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. God's purpose is that people should fear him. What is happening now has happened before, and what will happen in the future has happened before, because God makes the same things happen over and over again. And so th there's this cycle to life where, where things continually happen. And, you know, verse 11 said, yet God has made everything beautiful in its own time. And there, there's sometimes we don't understand everything that's going on. We don't understand all the pieces, but it's important. And it's a lot like either building Legos, if you have little kids, or, or Ikea furniture, if you're older, which is basically Legos for adults. Uh, <laughs> you know, and when, when you do either of those things, if you have like a large Lego set, it, you know, if you're, if you're like lucky enough to have like the Millennium Falcon or something, you know, it comes with this giant set of instructions. And I, I had a friend who was building it and taking pictures each day online. Or, or you know, if, if, you're, if you're building like a giant Ikea thing, so Sometimes when you're looking at all the pieces, you're like, do these really all go together? And, and sometimes as you're building, you're thinking, couldn't I leave this out? And, and sometimes you, you put pieces in wrong and you have to go back some steps and put things in right. And, and, you know, it's like life is like sometimes we're building a Lego set piece by piece. We're building an Ikea piece of furniture piece by piece, but not really knowing what the end's going to look like. And we have to trust that even though we don't understand the next step, God has a plan and God has purposes. And, and even when we step and misstep, even when somebody comes in and yanks our Lego set or kicks our Ikea furniture as we're putting it together, uh, you know, we, we can't control all those things, but God still has a plan and will make things beautiful in its time. It's a lot like... Um, an example I've heard a lot about this kind of stuff in life is, is you know, a rug. And if, 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 you know, we were like a little ant here on the carpet and we were crawling around, uh, this, this rug is kind of interesting. It's got ridges. There's like little crease things that you'd have to see it. And I'm not going to show you a picture of our floor because that would be weird. <laughs> but, but, you know, if, you, if you're a little ant, you're like, oh, this is annoying. There's ridges. There's colors. Like, why is it all so ran? I can't find my crumbs on this color. You know, this color doesn't look good with a bug I'm stealing. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, ants, you can go ahead and take any of the bugs you find. No, we're not bugging. Anyway, but, you know, there, you know it, it would seem like kind of crazy and random to an ant. But I can look from up here and I see the pattern. I, I see the, the ridges and different things have different shapes and textures, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, ant can't understand the pattern. I can. And God is like, you know, we're like ants, and God is like someone who can take a step back, and he sees the plan and all the things that are going on. Um, it, it's planted eternity in the human heart. Now, we are just naturally, some of us maybe more than others, wired to think about the eternal. Now, some of you knew my, 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 my puppy before. I, I had a dog named Chewy. He passed away. Chewbacca. <laughs> it's a beautiful, big brown chocolate. I love that dog. But, you know, 
basically his life consisted of looking for tennis balls and sticks and us, you know, and, he, and fetching things. And, you know, I mean, I, I'd be more like, <laughs> we, we have a Christmas tree farm and, and sometimes we'd be out there working on the farm. We'd have him, he'd break through the ice to get in there and he'd be like, you know, ice hanging all over him. He'd be in the lake though. He loved being, you know, and I, I'd always, so often I'd just find him sitting in the lake, you know, just kind of like looking out over the lake. And I know he was not contemplating the meaning of life. Is there eternity? You know, you know, he's, he was just, he was chewy, great dog, but, but he limited capacity to, to think beyond this life and the next tennis ball. And, and we, we've been given this, this, <laughs> this ability, that there's something set in the hearts of people that we contemplate the eternal. We contemplate the meaning of all this. And outside of God, life can seem meaningless uh, because even though there's good and the bad, nothing lasts. You know, uh, I've never been to one. It's one of those, like, it's on my bucket list. I don't know if it's the big bucket list of things, but it's like one of those things. I, I kind of want to do it. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. They probably won't have them anymore. I know uh, at least one person uh, here has worked at one. But there's an escape room. And, and the idea of the escape room is, and again, I haven't been, so there's a little bit of, you know, uh, not first-hand knowledge of this, but basically you come in, they, they give you some clues, and you're in this room, and you have to escape. And I, I've heard stories of friends who get so obsessed with being sure that the clue is in one place that it's not, and they spend the entire time in the main room because they never get to any of the clues. And you have, you have kind of, I guess you can get hints as you go along if you kind of get stuck on some things. And the idea is your search for clues to get where you're meant to be. You, eventually you escape if you solve the problem. And, and the, the truth is most of us, you know, wouldn't spend our entire lives in an escape room. You know, we, we'd want to get out because we're made for more than that room. And, and honestly, life is kind of like an escape room. There's, there's clues and there's things that point us to God. And there's other people who can give us clues and point us to God. But ultimately, there's a plan and a purpose for something that's beyond this life, that's beyond this room. And, and, and we can embrace the seasons of life because ultimately we know that there is one in control. There, there, there is someone who has a plan. And, and we have an advantage over Solomon because we have the New Testament. And, and in Romans 8, a popular verse, the Apostle Paul writes, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Uh, you know, this is like this. If you've ever read Romans, it's this big, complex letter, and he's wrestling through some big issues. Uh, but, but kind of succinctly to say, you know, he he says, you know, um, you know, God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God are called according to His purpose. You know, God. It doesn't say God causes everything, but it says God causes everything to work together for good. You know, God is working. We, we you know, there's deists who believe that, that kind of God created the earth, spun it, let it go, and things are kind of working out. But we're, we're not like that. We believe that God is active and working in history uh, uh, and is currently moving. Uh, you know, and it says God is working good. You know, not evil, not retribution, ultimate purpose is God has a good plan in this. There's a plan to the carpet. There, there's a plan to the a tapestry. And, and even though we may not be able to see it, we may not be able to understand it, God's doing something with it. Now, the American, our problem is, you know, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, which we talked about, is often our biggest concern is, am I happy? But that's not always God's biggest concern. He's working good, not working happiness, working good. Uh, it says God works all things together. You know, as Solomon recognized, the, the pain in the world, but things don't always go our way, but God will still take all those things and work them together and, and do good. And now, sometimes uh, bad things can be judgment. You read the story of David and Bathsheba, uh, David, did bad thing. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll let you read that story, figure it out. But, you know, bad consequences. And it's like, you know, if you're speeding through the town of Wyoming here, uh, Chief Willie or one of his associates will pull you over and, and give you a, a um, souvenir uh, a uh, piece of paper that you can bring home and you can you can make a donation to the local police department. You're encouraged to do that or you go to jail because you get a speeding ticket because you, you, you did something wrong. And, uh, and, but so, and sometimes things are a result of evil forces happening. You know, I'm 
You know, Luke 13, there's a woman who'd been crippled by an evil spirit. She'd been in bed double for 18 years. You know, it's a, there, are, there are times that the demonic uh, oppresses someone. Sometimes there's just physical ailments too. But, you know, we, we see that. And, and sometimes even bad actions can be used for good purposes. If you read uh, the book of Genesis, you know, uh, uh, you know, some of you heard Joseph and his coat of many colors. And, you know, he, he basically, the whole story of the book of Genesis Basically, he's kind of a jerk to his brothers in some ways, but, but, but his brothers beat him, sell him into slavery, off into Egypt, but then he saves all the people. You know, he, he, he manages to, you know, he, God gives him these dreams. All these bad things happen to him along the way, but eventually God raises up this position where he can, he can save the people, including his own family who comes, and, and God, uh, you know, Joseph forgives them. Uh, and so, you know, even bad actions of his brothers, you know, selling him into slavery, doesn't matter how frustrated you are with your siblings. Beating them and selling them into slavery is not okay. But... But God will use that. And even God uses even that. And sometimes God uses the result of just the fallen world when things aren't right to display his, his greatness. In John 9, there's, there's a story of Jesus walking along. He sees a man who's born blind and his disciples are, hey, hey, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his sins or his parents' sins? Like, like who sinned? Like, whose fault is this? And Jesus says, it's not because of his sins or his parents' sins. This happens so the power of God can be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming when no one can work, but while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. It, it, Jesus doesn't say, you know, everything happens for a reason, but, but, he, but, he, but he heals them. To, you know, and so God will just use sometimes uh, things so that God can show who he is through them. You know, and many, there's many reasons things can happen. And at times, I think it's tempting to, to try to discern why. And it's not a bad thing sometimes to try to figure out why things are happening, because sometimes they are the result of sin. They're a result of things we did wrong. I had a <laughs> friend one time, um, <laughs> and uh, one time he asked me, you know, um, why do all these bad things happen to me? And he kept asking me that question. I assumed from the many times he asked me that, he really wanted me to tell him. So I mistakenly, or maybe good, I actually told him, well, part of it is the really bad decisions you make along the way. And I kind of pointed to some of them and he got really mad and, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't think he was allowed back in the Burger King after that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, sometimes things are, you know, we have to look at, you know, are, are things decisions, but, but a lot of times, you know, things happen in life um, and we can't stop them. There, there, you know, there's good, there's bad in life. And where we can find comfort when those things happen is the fact that, that God is there, that God came down. And, and ultimately, there's nothing that can take that relationship from us. If we were to continue it in the book of Romans a little further down, it says in verse 38, we were at 28, now we're at 38, I, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither our, our feels, fears for today, and we got a few of those right now, right? Nor our worries about tomorrow, few of those, huh? Anyone? Quarantine worries, and if we're honest. If we're, you know, uh, not even the powers of hell could separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. No virus. Uh, <laughs> uh, just throwing that in there. That's not in there. Uh, indeed, nothing at all in creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that God has revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so nothing can separate us from God's love. So yeah, there's good and there's bad in life. And these things point us to God, but we don't have to worry because we can trust the one uh, who loves us. And if you're a follower and a believer in Jesus, uh, you know, God will walk you through it with you. He doesn't necessarily keep you from all things happening that are wrong and bad in the world, but we can trust that God is with us. Uh, the truth is, if you're on his team, he'll use everything. You know, he'll be there to comfort and nothing can separate. And God will use all the things. Bad ha things still happen because, you know, people choose evil. But, but God will use all those things to direct you and make the good out of bad. Uh, Solomon continues. I also noticed that under the sun there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. And I also thought about the human condition, how God proves to people that they are like animals. For people and the animals share the same fate. Both breathe and both must die. So people have no real advantage over the animals. How meaningless. Both go to the same place. 
They are from dust and um, return to dust. For who can prove that the human spirit goes up and the spirit of animal goes down? So I saw that there's nothing better for people than to be happy in their work. That is our lot in life. No one can bring us back to see what happens after we die. Now, the, the world is a little corrupt at times. And, it, you know, I, <laughs> the world is corrupt. Courts are corrupt. Uh, they don't always make the best judgments. We see that, you know, we can see courts across the country and sometimes we're unhappy with them. Governments are corrupt, um, you know, some more than others, some behind the scenes, some out front. That's a, that's a whole story for or a conversation for another time. And, you know, Christians should fight for social justice. You know, cr Christians, you know, should fight for justice in this world. We shouldn't just go, oh, well, God will judge. No, we need, we need to fight for it now. We need to do good. Uh, in fact, you know, it was recently Martin Luther King Day. As, you know, those of you who know me, I always like to point out that it's not just Martin Luther King. It's not just the Dr. Martin Luther King, but it's the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, and a lot of his, his, his philosophy comes out of the teaching of Jesus. And, and so we recognize him as someone who, who fought against oppression, fought against evil. And so, you know, it's not like we just sit back and don't do anything about these things, but, but we know that ultimately, uh, in, in many places of the world, and even in our own lives, there's not always perfect justice. We're only truly going to have justice when God judges at the end. The God who sees all, knows all, will judge justly. And, and again, you know, Solomon's in here with this theme that life on their son is hard and then you die. Uh, and outside of a relationship with God, nothing's eternal. Nothing lasts. It's like grasping smoke. It's like chasing after the wind, these, these things he said. And, um, and, and we can trust him. We can trust that, you know, he'll do good through all things. Um, I think that was the first week where we couldn't meet together and we did COVID. I kind of did a, a standalone message and I was talking about uh, the story in Mark 4 uh, where, where Jesus and his disciples, Jesus says, hey, let's go to the other side of the lake. Jesus jumps in the... Um, this is in Mark chapter 4. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole story. You, you can read it. And so, you know, Jesus sleep in the back of the boat, and this storm comes up, and, you know, they're in this little kind of boat. <laughs> you know, I, I picture the SS Minnow, uh, you know, in the... I don't know. <laughs> Uh, on a three-hour tour, a three-hour... Anyway, they're, they're, they're shooting across the lake, Jesus in the back, and he's asleep. Which, number one, I like to always say, this is theological justification for my Sunday afternoon nap, because Jesus naps. <laughs> and you know, the, the people who love sleep said amen. Uh, <laughs> but really, you know, he's in sleep, you know, sometimes they're waking up, he's like, don't you care we're going to drown? You know, don't you care about us? And then, then he answers them, you know, why are you afraid? You know, don't you have any faith? You know, uh, and so Jesus, uh, <laughs> you know, well, he just, well, he says, silence, be still first, and, and it just stops. And then he's like, hey, why are you afraid? Don't you still have faith? And they're terrified. And they're, it's kind of this whole funny story because they're terrified that the guy who they asked to wake up to do something could actually do something. Uh, and it's this funny thing. And, and there's a lot, of, a lot of lessons and things. You can go back and, and listen to the, the full message on that. But really, it, it's the idea, um, you know, of, you know it, that we can trust God. And, you know, and when we're in the right boat, when we're in the boat with Jesus, you know, when there, it doesn't matter what comes at us. There, there's this, we're in the midst of the coronavirus in question, you know, where's your, where's your faith? At that moment when, when someone's leaving, when someone's dying, a cancer dying, you know, any of the, these circumstances that surround us, any of these kind of circumstances of, of bad or the good ones that, that arise in life, uh, you, know, you know, who are we going to trust? You know, the, the storm can be bigger than the boat, but the one in the boat is bigger than the storm. And, and you know, the, the storm may be bigger than the boat, but the one in the boat is bigger than the storm. And, and you know, I know where this boat is going, but I, I definitely, you know, I don't always know where this boat is going, but I know the one who's in the boat. And we can trust Jesus. We can trust our faith in God when there's good, when there's bad coming at us in life. And there will be both. And we're on Team Jesus. We're in the right, we're in the right boat no matter what life throws at us. You know, and again, kind of go back to the, this escape room uh, metaphor. You know, 
life can be confusing. And again, I've never been in the escape room, but I imagine it's very confusing. And people, like again, I've read stories where people get focused on the wrong thing. They get so convinced that this is where the clue is and they'll, they'll spend their whole time on that. And the people are like, that's not where the clue is. I mean, the, the host of people could tell you, but you're, you're convinced that's the clue. And that's how life is. We can get distracted by all these things, by the bad things that happen to us, by the good things that happen, by the stuff that we can gather in life. We, we can get, get so stuck on all these external things that we miss the real purpose. And, and all these things that happen are clues and ways that God is drawing us to them. The people who come into our lives, you know, there's people who want to pull us the wrong way, but God's also sending people to pull us the right way. And we may not understand all, but, but we need to understand that we need God to make sense out of it all. And when we have that relationship with him, we'll better understand how to put this whole life together. And we can be comforted knowing that, as Romans 8.38 says, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow so appropriate right now not even the powers of hell can separate us from god's love no power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed nothing in all creation will ever separate us from the love god has revealed in christ jesus our lord we're made for more than this life and ultimately we can trust that god's going to work all things together for good let's pray Father, we thank you. We love you. We, um, we thank you that even though life can be confusing, we thank you that even though uh, life throws some things at us, that ultimately uh, we can put our faith and our trust in you. We, we thank you that when we put our faith and our trust and our hopes in you, that you give us new purpose, new plans. And God, I pray uh, that, that this week, that even when life hits, God, that, that those hearing the message today uh, will, will be able to go, hey, you know, it, it's, I need to put my faith and trust in the one in the boat. I need to put my faith and the trust in one who, who has the plan for the great escape room, that we're made for more than just this world and, and running around after the few little clues of, of things that we have. But God, we're made for this much bigger world that you've, you've made us for, God. And we pray that we'd find uh, that, that great escape. We find that we'd find that great purpose in life following you. In your name we pray. Amen.